So in this video we're going to be putting the super capacitor bank that we built in a previous video to the test, dead shorting it with some light gauge wire and seeing if it will start a car. So let's start off by putting this super capacitor bank through some tests and then we're going to move on to comparing the pros and cons between a cap bank like this and a regular sealed lead acid battery. So let's kick start the test with a little bit of destruction. So I'm going to dead short the jumper cables with some galvanized wire and I've got my clamp meter over here measuring amps. It would be curious to see uh, how many amps we're drawing on a dead short. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. Oh, fire. Good. Love it. Yes. So basically the wire failed pretty much instantly once we connected the terminal um, and made a rather impressive display as the galvanizing pretty much vaporized and produced a nice plume of smoke. And on the clamp meter, I've uh, replayed the video and saw a peak current of around about 200 amps or just over actually. And for those of you wondering how much juice is left in the capacitor bank after that, well we started off at 11.7 and it's now at 11.1. .1, so still plenty of juice left in it. Right, so same same only different. I've replaced the galvanized steel wire with a single strand copper wire. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Ah, okay. It broke almost instantly. Let's replay and see how many amps it drew. Alright, so upon reviewing the footage, I could see a peak reading of 328 amps on the clamp meter, and we've dropped from 11.1 .1 to 10.8. So we drew more current, but obviously for a shorter time period than the previous test because it didn't drop as much. Let's see if we can start a car with it. All right, here's the moment of truth. We've got the cat bank in there. Let's give it a whirl. Woohoo! No worries. So we've performed some tests with the super capacitor bank. Now let's talk about uh, comparing the cat bank to a regular car SLA battery. So let's start off by talking about the total amount of energy stored in each. So in the cat bank, we're looking at uh, a fully charged capacitor bank storing 13.5 watts of power, while the SLA battery can store 720 watts, vastly more than the super capacitor bank. Now, there is a problem with the super capacitor bank because it can't store a lot of power. Um, if you had a car that, let's say, was fitted with an aftermarket car alarm and it just slowly used a bit of power, the cap bank is going to drain very quick and you could see it flat in a day, two days, three days, maybe more, uh, and you come back and your car's dead flat, whereas the SLA battery would hold up just fine to that sort of environment. Um, also, let's talk about price. Depending where you are in the world, where you can source parts from, etc., the capacitor bank for me costs around 10 times as much to produce compared to buying a brand new SLA battery. So again, a big negative on the cap bank. Um, a positive thing for the cap bank is the fact that this can be mounted any direction. Vertically, horizontally, upside down, doesn't matter. It will always perform exactly the same. While on the other hand, SLA batteries, unless they're specialized, have to be mounted vertically. The capacitor bank should also see a much longer service life been able to withstand a lot more charge and discharge cycles compared to an SLA battery. Now one of the biggest pros of the capacitor bank is how quickly it can be charged and discharged. This thing can put out monstrous power without risk of blowing up and can also be charged equally very very fast. We're talking if you've got a power supply big enough within a few seconds where on the other hand a battery like this takes a few hours depending on the type of charger. So that is a huge positive and the main advantage to using a super capacitor bank over a battery. Another pro which doesn't really matter much when it comes to cars is the fact this is extremely light compared to a rather heavy lead acid battery. 
one aspect of the super capacitor bank I was curious about was to see how long a fully charged capacitor bank would hold on to that charge down to a usable level. And I'm pleased to say it stores and maintains its power very well. After about a month of sitting around after being charged to 13 and a half volts, the capacitor bank is now sitting at 11.7 volts, which would be absolutely fine uh, left sitting around in a car. It would start it just fine at that voltage. So in conclusion, is it practical to replace your SLA battery in your car with a supercapacitor bank? Well, not for me at least, not quite yet. And the reason is, is one of the reasons I mentioned earlier in the video, if you have an aftermarket car alarm that uses a little bit of power to keep everything working, you're going to struggle with a capacitor bank. Uh, my car alarm, for instance, will flatten this battery in two to three weeks, so I would hate to think how quickly it could discharge this capacitor bank with its rather low overall energy storage. However, I've thoroughly enjoyed the build and this is definitely going to be hanging around. The best application for me and the most useful one is the fact that I can very quickly charge this capacitor bank up and then go jump start a vehicle or a tractor or a truck, whatever it is that needs a little bit extra juice to get going. So it's been an awesome fun project for that reason. I hope you found the video useful and if you do want to build one of these for yourself or maybe you're just curious to how everything goes together, then click on the link up in the video's corner will take you to the construction video of this capacitor bank. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.